Hi, everyone. And first of all, sorry for the audio and quality of this presentation. Uh, I had kind of a little notice, so I'm going to try to do my best, okay? Let's talk about no code, no code and Bitcoin. Why? Because Bitcoin mostly is used right now as an asset. But Bitcoin is also a network, also an asset, but also we have the protocol, which is Magic Internet Money. And Magic Internet Money can allow us to create a whole new internet, kind of like what eventually HTTP did for the web. So this is a revolution, and, and don't be scared. This intro is going to be no more than three minutes, I promise. Real-time payments, microtransactions, no need to open bank accounts, no need to KYCs, financial inclusion, etc. Instant setup, and no need to establish an LLC or a company. But not everyone knows how to code. Coding is slow, even if you know how to, and it does not allow for rapid experimentation. Integrating Bitcoin Lightning Network payments to an app demands several things from a developer. So no coding is right now a perfect solution to create millions of apps and find amazing use cases that probably at the moment you haven't think of. And also Bitcoin needs more adoption, let's be honest, in all of its fronts, not only as an asset. We should want as much use cases as possible for the magic internet money because a good app going viral can create thousands more Bitcoiners than $1 million of an exchange advertising. We need to go through the path of least resistance to spark the magic internet money revolution. And that is empowering everyone to create a Bitcoin enabled app. Did you know 39% of all the websites in the world were created with WordPress? And these stats are much more interesting if you keep going. But I just wanted to say that like most of the internet is created with no code and tons of those apps are very, very big businesses. In other words, this cycle priority should be to empower creators to experiment with Bitcoin and mostly the Lightning Network. We just need to give them tools and they will bring the creativity. We do this with WebLN, APIs, no-code tools, and hacking around and finding out. We need as much as Bitcoin Lightning plugins for these platforms as possible, please. Why is this important? Mostly because changing to a value-enabled web will let us go back to our privacy as users, remove friction from payments, diminish spam and invaluable content congestion of the web, encourage a more conscious social engagement and increase the speed of Bitcoin adoption flywheel from a new end. And what else? Well, I think exchange exchanges should now take a passenger seat and stop being the fundamental way we interact with Bitcoin. They are important on ramps, but let's not confuse the temple for the entrance door. Let's do it. So we're going to be working with Bubble and I'm going to give a super fast intro. Bubble is like a digital Lego set for making websites and apps. You don't need to be a techie to use it. Just drag and drop pieces to create anything from a personal blog to an online store. It's an easy way for anyone to turn their ideas into reality without needing to code. You can basically create anything. So please go and look for some tutorials, basic tutorial, tutorials on Bubble. You will learn a lot. Let's get to it. So first, in Bubble, we're going to have to add some plugins. As with every platform, Bubble has their plugins. And we only have two or three interesting here for Bitcoin. So one is called WebLN, Bitcoin Lightning. We just click Install and they install. The other one is Crypto Compare USD, which will help us to get uh, prices, real-time prices of Bitcoin and other things. Let's start with how to connect a wallet and make a payment in a mobile app. So this is basically prompting a web browser wallet, which are those the ones that are mostly Chrome extensions or Firefox extensions like Albi or any of those. So you first need to put this web link, little widget in the screen, just for there to be um, the plugin 
Then you create a button, which can be named connect wallet. And you add a workflow. A workflow is something, we first are gonna type some text, but, but, but a workflow is basically the logic of what the button does. So this text is gonna say if you have or not a wallet connected. Basically, I'm saying if there's no wallet connected, you're gonna say not connected, but if you find a wallet connected with the plugin that we just set up on the page, then the text should read connected. Very simple thing. We're not going to create anything, anything complex here. I'm just going to give you some examples of what can you do. And the rest is up to you and your creativity. At the end, I will show you what I have done um, with this plugin in about 10 days uh, and without prior um, knowledge about Lightning Network or anything else. So this is the workflow. Basically, the workflow says when they click here, connect a wallet. So let's try it. Connect. All the account pops up. I click connect. Boom. Text says connect. So that is easy. You can have a Lightning wallet connected to a web app to do whatever you want. Okay. We're not going to put emphasis in, in design, not at all, because we don't have time. So let's try to make a payment. We're going to go again to the workflow, find the payment, or you can go to the elements and find the actions that the plugin offers. And here I'm going to type my address which is not the best thing to do specifically with this kind of action because here they recommend you to add a public key or, or the destination, basically the, the, the node address uh, for, your, for the payment that you want to send. I, I don't have right now an address with me, so I'm just going to type an example, but you should just type there a public key wherever you want to send the money. You click pay sats and then you get the invoice or the payment. This is a key send payment, okay? For everyone who understands, this is a key send payment. Now let's try donation widgets. I'm sorry that I'm gonna go so fast, but we don't have so much time and I'm also not in the best place to prepare for this presentation. So you go once again to your elements this is only here because we installed the plugin and you basically just drag and drop or, or put on the page the donation element that's how donation widget that's how it's called to choose an image for whatever you want this is something really simple that you can put on your website or whatever you want to create with bubble and all these elements seem to be very basic, but as you will see at the end, you can use them in so many ways. Uh, and of course, I would like nothing more than to be more, more Bitcoin plugins, but for now, this is what we have. So this here, you can use an LN URL address. You don't need a node public address here, public key. So this... When, when you preview this, this is how it looks. So you can put that into, a, into your app. Someone can decide to donate some sats. They can press on a number or just type their own custom amount. This will generate an invoice. You can pay there. I'm gonna cancel just to show you that if you don't pay, then you get the, the QR. Let's say you don't have a, a, a wallet but that you're gonna pay with a mobile wallet in your phone. So that's the reason that for that QR code. But here I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna pay the, the invoice. And there you go. You have a donation widget enabled by the Lightning Network, okay?
let's do a content unlocker with what we already know. This is going to be very simple. Again, please don't judge design. Please don't judge my audio. It's terrible. I know I'm not in a place to be recording this. So let's write something here. I'm going to put a shape on top of it just to show you basically how to hide something. I'm going to convert this into a group or fixed container, which is something that, that you will learn with a bubble as long as you, you, you do a basic tutorial. And I'm going to put a flat color. So now you cannot read what's behind that. And I'm going to put it white so it doesn't look that bad at the moment. So we're, go we're going to write something like read more. So if someone goes to our website right now, to this app, they can only read the first two lines, right? So let's add a workflow that if they pay some sats, they can read everything. I'm also very sorry about my English. Always remember to have the Webland element somewhere in your website. If you don't have it there, it, it won't work. It's very important. So now we're going to do this create invoice for receiver amount. Please note that this is not on the same part as actions. You need to find it. And we're going to put the receiver. Again, you can use an LN URL here. You can put an amount. And this is not a key same payment. This is an invoice payment. So we're going to put a second action, which is prompt a payment by invoice, which invoice the invoice that we just created in the first step. But we need one more thing. We need to let the square, the black square, know that it, we want it to hide once the Webland invoice is paid. Okay? So when the Webland invoice is paid, we hide this group. Group A is the little shape, the, the white shape. So read more. We click. It's a little bit slow. Sorry. Okay, there you go. We pay, and then you can see the rest. Of course, this is not the way to do it in terms of design. I'm just trying to be very, very fundamental here, and everyone can do whatever you want. they want. So let's create a job board. A very basic job board for shadowy super no coders, okay? So you have a database in Bubble. You, it's not only front end, you have also back end and logic. So we're gonna you have the database of, of users, but now we're gonna create the database of job posts. And these job posts will have titles and they will also have descriptions. So now we have two tables, one of users and one of job post, posts. Let's start. So it is very important for everyone to, to know that you should experiment with the plugin, see which actions they have, try one, try the other one. Not everything works as expected. But you can experiment, nothing bad will happen. So I'm going to create this button. You can post a job here. We're going to put some input forms, one for the title. And also one for the description of the job. Okay, some basic alignment. So now I'm going to put here a repeating group. A repeating group is something, it's like a table 
that brings data from a specific table of your database. Okay, I'm gonna explain this a little bit more. So basically, this repeating group will show job posts. The type of content will be job posts. So you can type, you can put inside a text box, and in that text box, will show something that I just decided, which is the job post title. And then if you put another text box, you can choose to have the description. So you can choose any, if there's a photo in the database for each one of these job posts, you can also show it there. So it's a way of showing lists of information, right? So right now, this is what we have. Um, definitely doesn't work because we need to add some workflows. So let's do the workflow for the button that is post a job. Again, we use the create invoice for receiver and amount. Please note that this, you need to look for it. It doesn't appear right away. The receiver is again, this famous Jake Toshi. And the amount is going to be something interesting. We're going to decide that the amount is the job title input number of characters. So the longer the title of the job, the more sats it will cost. Just as an experiment. It doesn't make any sense, I know. But this is also to, to, to let you know that you can invoices and payments can be dynamic. They don't need to be um uh, static of course and here we create also a second step which is pay by invoice which means prompt a wallet and ask it to pay the previous invoice that you just created so let's see what else do we need so we have also we need to let the system know again that the invoice has been paid so when a web in invoice is paid we want to tell the system please create a job post what kind of job post well use the information that is in our input fields title and description And one thing I missed is here, you need to do data source. You need to search for all job posts. If I leave this empty, this wouldn't work. This is very important. So let's try this again. I'm gonna write a title for this shadowy super no coder. Description. and post the job. So what happens? Automatically, you see you have an invoice for 21 sets, and if I pay, boom, there you have a new job post. So you can create an automatic business where people pay and you don't need to be using Stripe or, or any financial institution. So let's do one more thing. We need to reset relevant inputs here because it doesn't look good when the, the, the text stays at the input boxes when something is created. Let's try again. I don't even know what's a web file developer, but whatever. We post a job. You see, it's now 14 sets because we have dynamic pricing and there we have a second job post in our repeating group. One more little, little detail, we can use the crypto compare plugin to have real time information about prices, but not only that. So the interesting thing is that you can use those prices to show the people how much are they paying in US dollars. So we're gonna ignore all of this trash, garbage. 
we're gonna go to Bitcoin. And we're gonna say the US dollar price is basically the price of Bitcoin divided by 100 million because we have 100 million sats. So we're gonna, we wanna get the price of each sat and then multiplied by the job, by the number of characters in the job title. This is only because we're playing with the job title and, and the invoice price, right? And the, for the sats, it's gonna be much more simple. It's just the amount of characters in the job title. So let's see how this works. If you have nothing, then zero dollars, zero sats. If you start writing, then you have suddenly 11 sats and some cents of a dollar. If we write some more, then you have more sats and more cents. So basically you can create real time applications with these little things. So now I'm gonna talk about questions for good. This is the project that I created in Bubble with these plugins and some others. Questions for good is a place where you can add or post questions to someone specific and pledge some sats. If they answer, then the sats will go to a specific charity that you choose. More people can pledge more sats on specific questions to put more pressure into someone. And this is how it works. Just to show you how, how much can you create with Bubble and these simple plugins. And to be honest, I'm not very creative, so probably you can create much greater things. Here I'm gonna create a question. I'm, I'm gonna post a question. Um, let's say I'm gonna post a question to Nick Fatia, who, who wrote the book Layered Money. This is a Bitcoiner I, I really respect. And I'm gonna pledge 150 sats. And these sats will go to, let's choose a charity, to the Human Rights Foundation. If Nick answers this question, the way that I'm gonna verify, first I'm gonna pay, of course, you need to pay the sats. But then I click cancel and I get a, a QR code. This QR code can help me pay the invoice if I don't have a browser enabled app or whatever else, right? With this, I'm just trying to show you how dynamic your application can be. I'm, I'm gonna do this again and pay, actually pay for it so you can see how it works. And if you're asking yourself, how do I know if it's really Elon Musk who's answering my question? Basically, he needs to verify with his Twitter account. So Bubble has so many plugins, so you can always try and mix Bitcoin plugins with different other plugins and, and see what you can get. Now I'm gonna pay. And there you go. There's an, a new post in questionsforgood.com. And you can pick, ping Nick Batia, that's sending him a Twitter, a tweet, or you can tweet your question, which is the same at, at this moment. So all of these you can create it in Bubble. This was all created in Bubble. So if someone wants to give an answer, if they are not the person that I asked for, they can still do it, but they will need to pay 10 sats just to control spam. Or if you like a question that someone else posted, you can add some sats and say, listen, I also want this person to answer. So you pledge some sats and you can add a comment to the pledge. So this is what happens. You pay. Money is transferred by magic. And there you go. There's a question, there's the, there's the history of all the pledges and there's your comment. Everything is real time. No one needed to open a bank account for this, okay? And you can do pop-ups, you can do any kind of UX. Actually, Bubble is very good at UX. And here I have some examples of how people can get some sats or, 
or user sets or how they can download wallets, whatever. It just This is just show, trying to show you what you can do with Bubble and Bitcoin plugins. So basically, this is all I have right now for the moment. Um, I hope it was helpful, helpful in any way for you guys. And please be in contact with me if you're trying to build something with no code and Bitcoin. I'll try to be as useful as I can. Have a great day.